recording. And we're there. Okay, Aaron from uh, Aaron Frazier, who is the director of the healthcare and tax policy oh, wow. for the National Restaurant Association, is on the phone. And he is joining us from uh, Washington, D.C. And I really appreciate you taking the time on this. I know you don't have much time, Aaron. So I'm going to just let you get started and tell us what you know about um, the ERDT. I'm saying that wrong. Anyway. Yes. <clears throat> no, hey, that's really yeah. close at this, at this uh, juncture. Well, first off, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as a uh, as a as a son of the West, I appreciate talking to everyone uh, from the land of enchantment. Uh, red or green is my favorite question I've ever been asked when I am at a restaurant in New Mexico. Um, so really, uh, Carol asked me to talk a little bit about the employee retention tax credit. There's been a lot of ink about the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP loan. Uh, <clears throat> but I also think a lot of people should be looking at the ERTC because the PPP loan, uh, if you've Googled it, you know that there's a lot of uh, heartburn with that right now. Uh, the ERTC is a little bit more uh, building up a previously available framework, the Work Opportunity Tax Credit or WASI. Uh, this is a similar program to that if you've been familiar with it or your banker or your accountant is. Uh, so in the CARES Act, it created the Employee Retention Tax Credit, or the ERTC. This uh, will provide a tax credit uh, of up to 50% of up to $10,000 in wages that includes health care benefits uh, paid by an employer. The companies that are eligible to participate, and this is all year, this is from May, uh, I'm sorry, March 13th to the end of the year, December 31st. The companies that are available to participate and to get this tax credit, uh, they have to have operations that are partially or fully closed due to government order orders, which is pretty much everyone, or anyone who's had a decline in gross receipts by more than 50% in a quarter compared to the same quarter in 2019. Again, that's probably, unfortunately, that's probably going to be us as well. Uh, so either one of those can qualify for the ERTC. And we think a lot of restaurants should be looking at this. Uh, if you do receive a PPP loan, you cannot do ERTC. So they are exclusive of each other. So the real question is, how much does the ERTC provide? Uh, again, the credit is 50% of qualifying wages paid up to $10,000 in total uh, for all these wages between March 12th and December 31st. Uh, that's quarterly. And if you have 100 or fewer full-time employees in 2019, and the credit is based on the wages paid to all employees, whether, that, whether or not they actually worked in 2020. Even if the employees worked full-time and got paid for full-time work, the employer still gets the credit. If an employer has more than 100 full-time employees in 2019, then the credit is only allowed for wages paid to employees who did not work during the calendar quarter. So again, you can do you can do you can operate both. You have a lot more flexibility if you have under 100 full-time employees. Uh, how do you receive this credit? Time is of the essence here. You know you can't wait for a loan or a loan application or finding an SBA lender. If you want to receive the credit, you can immediately get reimbursed for the credit by reducing the amount of payroll taxes uh, that you, or employ, I'm sorry, employers can immediately be reimbursed for the credit by reducing the amount of payroll taxes that they have withheld from employees' wages that they are required to deposit. So eligible employers can report their total qualified wages and the health insurance costs on a, uh, on a Form 941, beginning with the second quarter in this month. Uh, <clears throat> if the employer's employment tax deposits are not sufficient enough to cover the credit, you can, uh, you can submit a Form 7200. It's, it allows for the, the advanced payment of employer credits due to the coronavirus. Uh, and of course, all this information needs to be in, in print in front of you. And I will send that to Carol uh, tonight or this afternoon so that she can follow up with this document uh, at the end of this call or, or by tomorrow morning. So let me stop there and just see if anyone has any questions or comments or experiences with the ERTC or even the Work Opportunity Tax Credit WASI. So I have a question. Can you take advantage of the ERTC 
until you receive your PPP funds? No, you cannot. You could, because the PPP covered loan period is between February 15th and June 30th, you can only do one. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's a great question. Though. Yeah. But you, you can do the ERTC and you can do other SBA loan programs. So if you're looking for a cash infusion, if you need liquidity right now, which we all do, you can look at something called an economic injury disaster loan or EIDL. Right. And this is a loan given in really good terms uh, for small businesses. There's 500 or less employees and you can, you can qualify for that loan. And when you do submit your application for that loan, the applicant is given a up to a $10,000 advance grant that does not have to be repaid. Uh, that passed as a part of the CARES Act at the end of last month. So yeah. you can do an idle and take advantage of the tax credit. Okay, so you can do the idle and the tax credit. And that's, um, and we talked a lot last week about the idle and the PPP but we had not talked about the ERTC. And so I just wanted to get somebody to talk about that. And I really appreciate you being on. Um, if anybody has any more questions for Aaron, he is, um, he is gonna have to leave. And so if you have more questions about the ERTC, please type them into the chat. Um, you can also unmute yourself if uh, it's a quick question. But um, Aaron, I appreciate you being on and I appreciate all your work. I, I don't know if everybody on this phone call knows how much work you all have done on all of these relief bills, the two that have been passed and now uh, a third maybe uh, relief bill and what are we calling it? Um, making sure that they got it right in the first place. Uh, one of the things that's frustrating me is that, you know, almost all businesses can apply for a PPP loan and um, some of them don't even have to be hurting. And that kind of makes me mad. But the good news is I heard from one of my members and he received his uh, loan, his PPP loan over the weekend on um, Sunday. So, oh, wow. so that's how fast they're going. Um, and I'm, I'm terribly impressed. I didn't think that was possible. Um, one of the things, and I don't know if you're on a computer, Aaron, but one of the things he sent me was this uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that he used now. So just so you know, this is, these are not his real numbers. These are fake numbers, but um, he put this spreadsheet together from what he used to get this loan. And so we're going to put this in our newsletter tomorrow so that you guys can use the same spreadsheet if you haven't done these numbers yet and if you haven't applied for the PPP loan yet. Um, that will all be there. That's great. Yeah, and, I mean, it's super helpful because, well, the government doesn't make things easy. So this at least simplifies it a bit and you can look at your W2 uh, um, information and get all of this from there. And he's the, he's the one also that got the loan over the weekend, so I was, Really glad to hear that because I've been pushing my members to be first in line and uh, hopefully hopefully you are first in line and you've got it. Um, are there any more questions for Aaron? If not, I'm gonna let him go enjoy his son's birthday party. And uh, Aaron, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, absolutely. And I would just follow up and say that it's fantastic information on what has worked so far. Uh, we've heard a lot of the contrary of what has not worked. Um, but again, please, you know, reach out to me and, and working with uh, the New Mexico Restaurant Association is great. Um, the, and I'll just say there's no civil, silver bullet that we're trying to pursue right now. We're just trying to get as much, as many, as many options available and if, where we can illustrate the ins and outs of them and which ones might work for you and your employees and your business. Uh, because these are all just bridges, right? We're trying to go over troubled waters right now. And we really appreciate everyone's support and feedback. Uh, because <laughs> in some ways, when we're trying to do regu regulations and implementation, it's like trying to learn how to land a plane while you're flying it. Um, and your feedback is critical right now. So I really appreciate everyone's support. All right. And, and I tell you, um, just these calls are keeping me up to date on, on what people are struggling with. So 
if I hear something specific, I will let you you guys in uh, Washington know. And just just so everybody knows, we work very closely with the folks at the National Restaurant Association, um, and we've got a great relationship. So we really appreciate that too. Great, thank, thank you. you. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna log off now, but I'll be available, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. So guys, I don't have all that much more. I did want to show this to you and tell you that this is going to be out tomorrow. I also want to tell you that tomorrow we're going to have our attorney on. She's going to answer your legal questions. She will also have her uh, labor attorney on and to answer your labor questions. Things like, how do I lay off people? How do I bring back people? How do I um, it just, I know you guys have questions. I know um, you need the legal help and we'll have uh, legalese here tomorrow. Um, on <coughs> Thursday, Antonia will be back with a different lawyer, but somebody who, uh, sorry, she's gonna have Erica Poindexter set up for Thursday and Erica is a bankruptcy expert. So here's the thing is I don't want anybody to claim bankruptcy. It'll just rip my heart out. But I want you guys to protect yourselves and I want you to know how to protect yourselves and your, your personal homes and your personal money um, so that you, if, if something happens and you can't get back on your feet, at least you're protected with your personal um, information and, and all of your personal assets. So um, there's that. And then Friday, so today the governor is going to issue a press release from what we understand, and it's going to be, be an okay for restaurants to sell convenience items. Now, for the most part, we've had the ability to do this, but it's just the governor saying, yes, <coughs> this is something we want you to do. Now, it's going to open us up to a little more scrutiny as far as how many people are in your restaurant, only five people in the restaurant with a six foot spacing between them. I mean, the rules are still gonna be the same, but you're gonna be able to sell sundries out of your restaurants. I was on a webinar last week with uh, Cisco folks here in New Mexico, and they, um, they did a great job kind of showing restaurants how to do a pop-up in your restaurant and um, maybe a grab and go so people can come in, they can pick up their to go and then they can grab a meal as well that they can take home and fix themselves. So they've got their hot food tonight and then they've got a meal for tomorrow, a lasagna, a enchilada, I, you know, whatever it is you do, they can, they can take it home and warm it up. So we're gonna have that on Friday. So Cisco will be here on Friday and telling us about that. Um, I have a, uh, somebody says they have customers in Las Cruces who have asked restaurants that either have limited hours who have temporarily, temporarily closed to put a message in their answering machine, letting the public know. So that's just something that, you know, people are asking if you are closed, try to let people know. Put it on your website. Put it on um, your. Carol, this this is Allison. I'm yeah. I'm the one who actually posted that. It um, is what I'm trying to do down here is is trying to get a lot of folks to go to you know take out get takeout get delivery, and so I had someone who was trying to do that call a restaurant, and it just rang and 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 then and nothing. And so then they found out, well, that restaurant was temporarily closed. Um, I tried doing that with a restaurant that, you know, now I found out has limited hours, but nothing, it, just like the phones just rang. And so these guys want to support restaurants and they, you know, they're really trying hard. And so it would just be really kind of a neat touch if you could to just say, hey, during this time we're, you know, temporarily closed or our office hours are, or, you know, our, our delivery hours are whatever would be really helpful. I think one of the things that if you don't know it, you can go to your Google, my place, my places, Google, and 
change your hours on that if you own that, which you should own that if it's your restaurant, change your hours on that and then anybody searching on Google will see that you're temporarily closed. So that's another place and most people are searching on their phones for your phone information, et cetera. Um, I just wanted to go over what we sent out today. <coughs> for those of you who are here, you're on the call, you know where you are. Um, finding eligible SBA lenders in New Mexico, we had a conversation on Friday where some of you were having a hard time finding lenders in your area, so hopefully this will help you. Um, I'm not gonna open that up right now. Again, the Serving New Mexico Fund, we need to get that funded um, through your customers and neighbors, um, not necessarily through the restaurants, but we really appreciate your help getting this funded. We had, I believe it was 19, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, um, applicants over the weekend. And so we're looking at funding that, but we will be out of money um, soon if we don't get it funded a little bit better. Um, so this curbside for full service restaurants hosted by the Texas Restaurant Association, I have looked at that. It's, it's almost the same thing that we're gonna learn on Friday from uh, the Cisco folks, but if you wanna get started now, please um, look at that. Um, tell the governor to let restaurants deliver alcohol. We're getting no movement from the governor's side on this, but at least she knows that we're interested. Um, So again, we're going to continue the daily calls. And if you guys want to unmute yourself to ask a question right now, you're welcome to, um, or you can chat. And we'll, we can make this a short call today. And then again, tomorrow, we've got Antonio Royval Mack answering your legal questions. Uh, Thursday, we have her back again, talking about protecting yourself in bankruptcy. And then Friday, we have the folks from Cisco helping us uh, with that setup of a uh, convenience items in our restaurants. So I don't see any other chats. Carol, this is Minerva. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I apologize for jumping in late. Um, oh. but I, I did have a question on a um, couple things. First, because I'm late and you might have covered this already, do you have any good resources for the idle loans? That's something that I'm particularly interested in. And I've been able to finally get on the website and start the application, but I'm still waiting for figures to plug in so that I can submit the application. There's, um, like I said before, you, you go on the website and if you're missing something, there's no way to save the application and go back and do it later. Um, if I tr close the page, I'll be off of it and then have to start over again. So, so the page is sitting open right now. <laughs> I, know, I know what you're talking about. Now, I didn't do, um, we are actually, the Restaurant Association is applying for an idle loan. Cindy, are you there and can you unmute yourself? Um, and just let us know what your experience was because I haven't done the application. She may be on another call. So hang in there, Minerva. Um, Cindy's the only one I know that has applied for this. Is there anybody else out there that has applied that would be willing to talk to Minerva? So we're not getting any yeah, no, um, there was, you know, I've asked a couple of people and everyone's told me that um, basically I'm doing it correctly. And um, so I can either close the page and start over or leave the page open and plug my numbers in when I'm ready. So I'm working furiously to get my numbers plugged in there and get that submitted. Um, the other question I had is about any grants that might be available for small businesses in New Mexico. I've seen a lot of grants like throughout the United States just popping up all over the place. And I wondered if there were any state grants or anything else that, um, you know, that we can find out about. 
So I am also trying to get a hold of a gentleman, Donnie Quintana, and he runs the block grants for New Mexico. And these grants are going to be small individual grants going out to restaurants in mostly rural New Mexico. So I don't know if you would qualify for that. So I'm, um, I don't know if that's a good one. I also was on a webinar the other day with the Tourism Association and they were talking about different kind of grants that are available. Um, I will, if I find anything that's available, I will get that to you. But I do think there's going to be some small business grants available through the um, New Mexico Economic Development Department. Um, if anybody knows about these, please don't hesitate to speak up now. Um, so those are the things that I know about. I, I haven't heard of anything else, but as they come up, I will definitely get you guys the information and you in particular, Minerva. Great, thank you. And I did hear about the James Beard um, um, grant. It was sent to me uh, through a friend right away when it was opened up, but I tried to apply like immediately, but it was already closed. So they completely ran out of money like in the first hour. I don't know if that one will come back again. Yeah, well, if they've run out of funds, oh, there's another one. There's, um, there's a community foundation, New Mexico Community Foundation, and um, it was on the tourism website. Now, I don't know if they're gonna give grants to restaurants or to restaurant employees, or and, and actually they were gonna give them wider but they have a lot of money and again i'm trying to reach that gentleman his name is bill smith and i'm trying to reach him to come on uh the program as well so carol uh, uh, this is posted. allison yeah uh, bill smith is uh part of my leadership new mexico class so if you want me to reach out to him let me know please do yeah i um i haven't got his contact information i i reached out to the tourism department this morning and asked for that and Donnie Quintana, I got Donnie's information right away, but not Bill's. And as of the webinar on Friday, they had money, um, but they were not giving it out yet and they hadn't, they hadn't figured out what their criteria was going to be. So I would love to talk to him and see, you know, where they're gonna go. Okay, well, I appreciate it. And I know that all of this stuff is changing you know, hourly and as we speak. So I know that you guys are doing a great job corralling it all and getting it back out to us. Thank you for that. Well, and I, I will just say if you guys, you know, don't miss the phone calls. I, I'll try to make them as interesting as possible, but there's going to be information in every single phone call that you can use and, um, you know, get somebody on the, the call on a daily basis just because um, the information, you know, I was just on a call earlier today with my counterparts in other Western states, <clears throat> and they have done nothing for their members to get them through the, the PPP loans. And I told them, I've got my members lined up already. They, <laughs> they were lined up on Friday. So, um, and, and hopefully you guys are, are paying attention and taking advantage of these funds because I, I want I want my members to get them first. They're gonna be gone here soon. And I want you guys to be the first ones to get these loans and funds. So I'll keep my eye out for them as well. And if there's nothing else, um, I'll Carol, give you guys- I'm on now. Oh, hey, Cindy, tell us about the idle loan. Did you hear the question? I did not. Okay, so Minerva was asking, um, she's got the idle loan application up she doesn't have some of her information, so she's afraid to close it because she's going to have to start all over. What was yeah. your experience with it? Hey, yeah, you got to fit in a shit in one sitting, but you don't know what they're going to ask until they ask it. Um, luckily, I have access to the information that we needed. Right. So, so I, keep it up on your screen. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, as long as you can. Um, Unfortunately, if you're dealing with an outside entity as your accounting, um, 
you're probably stuck re-entering stuff. What you might do is go back. I know there's a back button. Um, go back through it, screen print the items, and mark down what you chose and what information you had already put in. That way, if you have to close the window, you can get into it very quickly and quickly page through it. You don't have to sit and read the questions over again. So good. Okay, thank you. Can Sarah. I ask a quick question? Absolutely. So this is Suzette from the Greenhouse Bistro. And on the idle loans, you know, we did, I mean, we submitted our applications and we got an application number, but I never received an email or any other information. Is there a way to track it with this number? I don't know of that. I got, I got the same thing. I've got a screen print that says that I, with the application number, but I got nothing else. It didn't send me an email, which I thought was kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anybody that's actually received this um, loan, so I think it's sort of like La La Land. Well, I don't know if it's La La Land. Um, we're keeping an eye on the bank account that I gave them to deposit the $10,000 in, and that's basically all I can do. Um, the government has given us nothing else on this. Yeah, I was um, I was encouraged that the PPP loan could come through as fast as it did. And so, and of course you're working with your banker. So your banker is the one who's basically saying, yes, you've got all the information here and yes, we'll go ahead and, and um, give you the loan. But um, the, on the other side, the idle loan is coming from the SBA and not through your bank. And so I think that's gonna be the biggest um, setback on that. Do you know which bank it was that funded that PPP loan? I don't. I can find out. I don't think they're on the phone call right now. And I submitted mine this morning through um, uh, Washington Federal, who is one of the lenders here in Albuquerque. So we'll see what happens. Good luck. Yeah. All right, any other questions? I'm happy to give you all back a half an hour of your lives. Thank you guys for being here with us and uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, at 3 p.m. See you then. Bye-bye.